We hear when the sound energy is converted into the electrical energy and this transduction happens in the inner ear. In this video, I am going to tell you what are the components which are being there in the inner ear and the structure of cochlea. Welcome back to HM Learnings. I am Harshita, the creator of HM Learnings, where students come to clear their concepts and to create the study material. Make sure that you have subscribed my channel. You can also follow HM Learnings on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And uh, we are going to start our today's video that is about the mechanism of hearing part 2. In part 1, we already discussed about the external and the middle ear as well as we have introduced the concept of sound that uh, the sound is a longitudinal wave and uh, what is compression, what is reflection and in this video, we are going to discuss about the structure of the cochlea in which basically the hearing or the transduction mechanism happens. So in the upcoming video, uh, uh, the upcoming video will again be the continuation of this video only in which we are going to discuss about the that how the hearing happens how the bending of the hair cells happens and then in the further videos we are going to discuss about the processing by the cochlea that how the frequency and the intensity is being coded by the cochlea so let's start our today's video that is first of all we are going to discuss about the inner ear so inner ear is also called as a labyrinth which is uh, a bhul bhulaya. So it is called as a bhul bhulaya because of its complex structure and it has two parts the membranous and the bony labyrinth. So bony labyrinth is made up of the bone and inside that bony labyrinth we have a membranous labyrinth which is made up of the membrane. So the bony labyrinth is a series of uh, channels in the petrous portion of the temporal bone and it is filled with the perilip which has a composition similar to the CSF or the plasma. Now inside this bony labyrinth we have a membranous labyrinth which is filled by the endolem which has a high concentration of potassium. So the significance of high concentration of potassium we are going to discuss when we are going to discuss about the mechanical electrical construction. So there are two components of this labyrinth. We have cochlea which is for the hearing and we are going to discuss about this in this video and the vestibular apparatus which is being there for the balance with, for which I am going to make a different video. So now uh, as I introduced you to the inner ear we can start our uh, video uh, regarding the hearing. So cochlea is called as an organ of hearing and the word cochlea uh, basically means nail because of its uh, uh, shape and it makes 2.5 tons. So 2.5 tons means it is going to complete one turn, then second turn and the third turn will be the half. So this is a snail shaped organ you can see here this is showing the uh, inner ear which has a semicircular canals and the otolith organs and here this is the cochlea which is being you can say uh, uh, it is being tra uh, transducted at the uh, cross section level and it is now showing the one cochlea so here many cochlea are there it is showing the one cochlea here so the one cochlea is having the three pallor fluid compartments which is being divided by the resonant membrane or the vestibular membrane and the basilar membrane. So it has three compartments the scala vestibuli which is filled with the perilim, the scala media which is filled with the endolim and the scala tympani which is filled with the perilim. So uh, the resonant membrane is present between the scala vestibuli and the scala media and the basilar membrane is present between the scala media and the scala tympani. So uh, the other thing which are important to know is that this is the base of the cochlea and this is the apex of the cochlea. So this base or the broad end of the scala vestibula is being closed by the foot plate of the steps on the oval window and the broad end of the scala tympani has a round window which is being closed by a thin elastic diaphragm. And the scala vestibula and the scala tympani they have been separated throughout the almost throughout uh, the longitudinal axis of the cochlea but they are continuous or you can say they meet each other at a point which is called as a helicot tremor which is present at the apex of the cochlea. So uh, with this we can uh, we actually completed about the cochlea. So now the thing is that, that within the cochlea also we have an organ of cotai. This is the organ of cotai which lies on the basilar membrane and this organ of cotai is called as a receptor organ because it consists of receptors which are responsible for transducing the sound energy into the electrical energy. 
So now we can shift to that, which is this organ that I also call as a receptive organ. So again, the scale of this organ has been increased to show you. So you can see here that this is the organ of Kotai and this is a basal membrane. This blue structure is the basal membrane. So basal membrane is extending from the base to the apex of the cochlea and the length of the cochlea is about 33 millimeters. And as we progress, uh, as we progressive pro progresses the cochlea, the, the chambers, they reduce. Okay, so the cochlea reduces as we progresses. Uh, so, the basal, on the basal membrane, the organ of cotai present and organ of cotai also extends from the base to the apex of the cochlea. So, this organ of cotai has four types of the cell. The inner hair cells, you can see a single row of the inner hair cells and the three rows, one, two and three rows of the outer hair cells. And pillar cells are being present between the inner and the outer hair cells and the supporting cells called as the diatom cells are present at the basis of the outer hair cells. The tectorial membrane is also being there which is which is from the which is attached uh, to a different ridge of the epithelium which is actually different from the organ of patai and it has a one end which is attached and the other end which is free so this tectorial membrane is covering the organ of patai and the hair cells of this outer hair cell is amending into the uh, are firmly attached to the tectorial membrane so this actually we can discuss actually will remain will become more clear when we talk about the structure of the hair cell so this is so we have discussed about the inner ear first in the inner ear also we have cochlea for the hearing in the cochlea we have seen three compartments within those three compartments the site of uh, transduction is being the organ of cotai in the organ of cotai also we are going to see about the hair cells so these are the hair cells now what is the structure of these hair cells and what is the site what what is the what is the main site of transduction with, uh, in the uh, ear. So this is again the points which I already uh, explained you. So this is showing you the structure of hair cell. So this is hair cell which is being present and uh, surrounded by the two supporting cells and you can see here this is the apical side of the hair cell and this is the basal side of the hair cell. So uh, on the apical side this will be amended in the endolip because hair cells are present in the stella media. So hair cells are uh, emitted here in the endolymph and uh, uh, you can see that this is the hair cell and from the apical surface of the hair cell there are certain projections which are going towards the which are extending, extending into the endolymph. So these are called as a stereocilia. So stereocilia is a plural word and stereocilium is a singular word. So the, uh, you can see this and all of these are called as a hair bundle. So you can see here that as we move what is happening there is an increase in the height of the stereocilia and the tallest of all of them is called as a kinocilium which is having a bulbous swelling. Now this kinocilium is actually not being there in the mammal because it degenerates at the time of the birth but it is there in the vertebrates like the frog. And you can also see here that at the basolateral aspect of this hair cell, there are efferent nerve endings and the efferent nerve endings and here the lymph will be the perilymph. So you can see here there are tight junctions which are being present between the hair cell and the uh, supporting cell in order to ensure that the endolymph doesn't come in the contact with the perilymph. And uh, uh, these are the points which are important and apart from this, uh, the very important point is here that this is the tip of the stereocilia. So at this tip, there are channels which are present and these channels are called as a mechanico-electrical channels, mechanico-electrical transduction channels or the MET channels, which are the non-specific channel. Non-specific means these are the cationic channels. So non-specific means they will allow the influx of any cation. It could be potassium, it could be calcium, but predominantly it will be potassium because endolymph is rich in potassium. And Apart from this, what is happening that uh, this point I think it will be become clear when we are going to discuss about the transduction mechanism in the upcoming video. And uh, the next thing is that that you have to remember which is very very important is that that stereocilia, these are the stereocilia or the hair bundle, it is being there in a limb or a fluid which is the endolymph. So there must be a stiffness in them otherwise what will happen as, they, as these are present in a fluid they can move if 
even if the stimulus is not coming. So for making them more sensitive to a stimulus, there must be a stiffness in this stereocilia. And its stiffness is because partly because of the actin filaments which is composing the stereocilia and uh, the, they, uh, there is cross-link actin filaments by the proteins and then it will be enclosed by the plasma membrane. Okay, so the stiffness is very important in the stereocilia. There is another component which contributes to the stereocilia which is nothing but the stippling and we are going to discuss about the stippling in the upcoming video. So till now we have discussed about the inner hair, inner ear, then the cochlea. Then in the cochlea we have seen that there are three compartments. After this we are zoom we zoomed out the scalar media and the organ of cuti and then in the organ of cuti we had talked about the hair cells and in the hair cells we had talked about the stereocilia uh, and the channel which is present on it so in the upcoming video i would like to highlight about the mechanism of transduction that how does the bending of the stereocilia happens and how does they act as a single unit what is their uh, what is the bundle's axis of mechanosensitivity and how does the ray reflection and the compression causes the transduction mechanism and the hearing. So if you like this video, please like, share and comment and please comment in your solutions for upcoming videos. Please subscribe to HM Learnings and till then keep learning.